Hi, my name is Larry Edwards. I am a preacher and teacher of God's Word, and my goal is to preach and teach God's Word in simplicity to where as you understand it. Two questions I have today that I want to talk to you about is number one, I'm going to try to answer those for you, is the Bible true? And number two, is God real? At some point in your life, you must come to a decision of what you believe about these two questions. A very wise is the person who searches them out, so I'm glad you're here. Number one is, I want to point out that the Bible is of supreme intelligence. Man didn't write the Bible. The Word of God, the Bible, the Holy Bible, straight from heaven, is just in printed form to where we can read it. But God only used man as a tool to write what he wanted written, as to what he wanted to say. You see, uh, man is a sinful person. The Bible says that uh, our heart is wicked and is very desperately so. So, the the man wouldn't write the Bible anyway, but just, just say he could. Which he can't, but just say he could. The problem is he would not, simply because, indeed, his heart is wicked and he's not bent on holiness. Secondly, we can know that the Bible is true because of prophecy. Of 31,124 verses in the Bible, 8,352 of them are prophetic in nature. Now what this means is that 27% of the entire Bible is on or about prophecy. Much of the Bible has already been fulfilled. You know, God protects Israel. And by the way, Israel represents a Christian. You know, Israel is a very tiny place on this earth. Very small, very tiny. And it's about 200 miles long and about 75 miles wide at its widest point. And uh, no one has ever been able to defeat Israel. All those nations, all those big nations around Israel uh, have never been able to defeat Israel. And so it is with the Christian. Uh, we're not going to be defeated. But, you know, understand that uh, we Christians, we will win battles and we will lose battles. But, you know, we will win the war. And it's just like Israel. They will win battles and they will lose battles, but they will win the war against evil. So I just want to point that out to you. Uh, the prophet Isaiah, uh, he spoke of Jesus' birth 700 years before it ever happened. The Bible in Second Peter uh, chapter 3 verse 3 tells us of a time that vividly uh, describes our world today. And it says, Knowing this, first of all, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and they would be calling evil good and good evil. John, uh, excuse me, Second Peter chapter 2 uh, verses 19 to 21 says this about prophecy. So we have the prophetic word made more sure to which you do well to pay attention to as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your heart. Now so far we have a good start and we have reasons to believe in the existence of God and, and know that the Bible is true. Number one is, no one can match the authorship of the Holy Spirit and write the Bible. Number two is, no one can dispute the history of the Bible and prophecy being fulfilled even before our very eyes. Number three, there were eyewitnesses who accounted for the authenticity of the Bible. Jesus was seen by more than 500 brethren and touched by some even after his resurrection. Number four, the Bible is more up to date than the morning newspaper. Now as a Christian, you can pick up the Word of God and the Word of God will speak to you. It will speak to your heart, your soul, and your mind, and it will meet your need for today. Uh, you can't say that of the newspaper. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, the newspaper is depressing, but the Word of God is uplifting. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit that lives in each and every Christian exalts Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father 
within our hearts. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit speaks directly to you and as Christians we experience this. We experience the leadership of the Holy Spirit on, on what we do during the day and uh, how to uh, react toward others and, and show the love of Christ and be a shining light for Jesus Christ in our life. And want also to point out to you, uh, do you think you know all the Bible? Well, wait just a minute. You can pick up the Bible at any time, don't care how long you've been a Christian, and the Holy Spirit will reveal to you even greater things that you do not know. You know, the Bible is like a living organism. It's an ever-running river of life uh, that God has given us. Uh, ever running river of the living God and he gives you abundant life to live for today God's word is uh, an eternal source of power that we can gain from each and every time we read the Bible uh, now God can speak to you directly he can speak to me directly and uh, if he wishes to do that but primarily he speaks us to us through his word Number five is the obedient Christian can testify of the nine fruits of the Spirit in their life. When we walk with God in obedience, He blesses us with nine fruits of the Spirit. And I'm going to tell you what those are. Those are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, faithfulness, self-control. Now when we're saved, we're given these fruits, these nine fruits of the Spirit. But it takes time to develop. You just don't change overnight like that. Yes, you're saved, but you have to apply yourself, study the Word of God daily, and let the Holy Spirit lead you. And over time, we develop uh, these traits, the nine fruits of the Spirit that God has given us at the time of salvation. When you are saved, you know, God, He has changed the heart of stone, and He gives you a heart of flesh. Bible says that we become a new creation in Christ. Now, a word of caution uh, for the disobedient Christian uh, who goes their own way and walks away from God, you know, they can expect discipline. When you go your own way, you will be disciplined by God for your own good. You know, that's what it's for. It's for your own good and, and most of all, it's for uh, the God's namesake. If you're not disciplined, the Bible says you're not a Christian. Then if you're, if you're not disciplined, the Bible says that you're an illegitimate child and you're not his. So uh, if you're not being disciplined, uh, you need to reevaluate yourself and to see if you be in the faith. Now, number six, as a Christian, uh, we can expect a war between the flesh and the Holy Spirit within you. This war is evidence of being saved. The flesh, the, the unholy spirit, and the Holy Spirit, they fight against one another for control of our mind and our heart. And that has nothing to do with loss of that salvation, but they do fight against one another. Uh, and if we give in to the Holy Spirit, give into His control to lead us and to guide us and put Him on Jesus on the throne of our heart, then we can win over uh, sin and over the domination of sin. Uh, now, as far as sin's concerned, you know, there was only one sinless, and that was Jesus Christ. But we had the power of the Holy Spirit within us to win over sin domination. Number seven, now I could go on and on about this, but uh, we've got to come to a point here uh, to where we sum it up. And uh, I hope so far you've been helped in trying to uh, prove to you that God is real and that God does exist and the Bible is true. Now, number seven is God's creation of all things tells us that God exists. The Bible says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Now, this single truth, this very single truth in the Bible, if an atheist uh, who say they're atheists, if they read this one thing, then they'll know that the Bible is true. Psalms 19.1 says this, The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of His hands. 
Romans 1, 18 to 20 says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. In other words, God showed them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. So that they are without excuse, the Bible says, because of that. In closing, I commend those who have looked into this question, uh, or these questions, of whether or not the Bible is true and whether or not God is real. So I just want to summarize real quick for you what we talked about. Number one is no one can match the authorship of the Holy Spirit and write the Bible. Number two, no one can dispute the history of the Bible and prophecy being fulfilled even before our very eyes. There were many uh, eyewitnesses who accounted for the authenticity of the Bible. The Bible is more up to date than the morning newspaper and meets our needs for today. The Holy Spirit gives us nine fruits of the Spirit and blesses us as we walk in obedience to God's ways. Number six, the Christian can expect a war between the flesh and the Spirit after salvation and discover that if we surrender to the control of the Holy Spirit, put Jesus on the throne of our heart every day, then we have the power over sin and domination. Number seven, God's fantastic and beautiful creation declares that He is real. His creation is so beautiful. Uh, it just really enthuses my heart to look at His creation, photographs uh, uh, out in nature, uh, in the wild, just looking at the beauty of the flowers and so forth. Now, if you do not know Jesus Christ, you can know Him today. The Bible tells us how. And that's through faith in Jesus Christ. So I invite you to know Him today. My prayer is that you will come to know Him and to receive Him and be given the gift of eternal life. Nothing else matters. So I hope you make your decision for Jesus Christ today. For Jesus is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And thanks for listening. God bless you, and have a good day.